if your belief in the Christian God and Jesus was mistaken in some way, how would you go about figuring it out? Would you would you look I at would personal experience? Would, would you find would there be something in the Bible? I would rather die believing than to die and then find out I was mistaken. Because after all, anything that God is asking of you from your life, what is it gonna harm you in this world and in this lifetime, as opposed to what will happen if you choose not to accept him? Because basically almost everything that he asked of us is stuff that human beings and their human nature, quote unquote, consider good and a great way to live your life anyway. So I would rather go live my life believing and pursuing after that than to die and find out I was mistaken by not believing. Have you, have you ever been so convinced that something was right that you're not even willing to entertain what you would accept to, to adjust on that, on that scale? Yes, God. I'm always reserving a portion of my mind to say, if this happened or if that happened, I would move on the scale. Are you shaking your head? Because if, if you're holding a part of yourself back, you might as well hold all of yourself back. Mm -hmm. So either you're all in or, or you're all out. So and if God is at the center of it all, then there's no room for that. How would you say, and I know that you're all in on your belief of the God, and a large part of it is because of your personal experience in the Bible. What specifically is it about the God that makes you so convinced that He He exists and He's real and He said, works in your life? There's just too many instances in my lives that proves to me and leaves no doubt in my mind that it, it can only be God. Like I unequivocally believe in Him, trust in Him, and there's nothing that could ever sway me. Nothing ever. It, ever. I mean, and even in, in terms of the modern sense and, and science and, you know, we have this discussion all the time, there's really like a false argument between science and, and faith and religion because science, you know, they, they, they try to explain away God, but really, truly, and honestly, God. all it does is prove it. Science because, proves God? Well, I mean, you go far enough back, what do they say? Well, <laughs> the universe, everything started with a big bang. Something happened. So, the, But then you ask the scientists, well, what was that something? And they don't have an answer, but mm -hmm. the answer is right there in the Bible. Do you, do you say? Do you, do you think that a scientist saying "I don't know" is not as honest as asserting that there's an answer for it if it can't be demonstrated? Mm. So, so you're saying that they're being disingenuous, saying they don't know, or no, no. I'll, I'll, re I'll rephrase it. In a situation where a, where a scientist might be presented with, how did the universe start? If if there's not sufficient evidence to illustrate how that happened, a scientist, an intellectually honest scientist, should say, "I don't know," because I think that would be an honest answer if you really don't know. But it sounds like you you were sort of maybe diminishing that stance that it's not it's not uh, an honest answer to say, "I don't know." when you could just assert that we know. I mean, and then and that assertion that, for you would be the Bible on that. that. Then he hasn't come to that. Based, uh, based, on his, based on his experiments, based on his analysis, he does not know. I mean, there, there's a lot of things scientifically we don't know. You know. There's a lot of things about the human brain that we don't know. Right. Uh, and, and all the time, scientists and, and medical experts say, hey, this is the things that we do know. You know, these are things that we don't know. We have a piece, we have a snapshot, you know, a portion of this particular pursuit of science, but we don't know the whole of it. Okay. And I think sometimes they're resting too much in the parts that they do know and making definitive statements mm. when there's so many things that they don't know. So it's like, you had to ask us if we were Christians. Now, you know, you do know that we just walked from out of service or we just walked from out of this building. So it's <laughs> right. presumed that we just came out of service. Yes. So therefore, you could just assume then and say, assert that we are in fact Christians when mm -hmm. that might not be the case. So... But if you recall, you know, I did ask. But you did ask. Yeah, I, I, I didn't so, just assume. So you, but you it, gave but us that opportunity yes, to sir. say, yes, we are in fact Christians. Right. So just talking in terms of scientists. Okay. They, they make assumptions at times based off of what they do know, the, the bits and pieces that they do know. That, well, the universe, you know, is made up of this, that, and the other, whatever else. Um, so therefore, that's 
what that's what it is. But Look, let's let, let's say, let's say I give you that point just to move the conversation forward. One thing that I think uh, scientists maybe would, would differ from people that have a belief in a god, like yourself, where you're at the hundred percent, is they would be open to new evidence to revise their position on something, mm -hmm. right? Like if they discovered that there really was somebody out there that created everything, they would likely revise their position. But when I asked you guys both, what would cause, what would you accept to move down the scale? It did sound like you said nothing. Yep. That, that I'm resolute in my position. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me ask you again, are, are you still content at being at the 100% without even investigating or being open to what you might accept? I know you were like maybe 95 to 100 percent I mean you always leave some room I mean you know some room but because I haven't experienced everything there is to experience in this life and I'm mm -hmm. in this world would you say that you could be mistaken no no I mean no at this point I would say no God has proven himself to be too real and I'd rather place everything on him than not let me ask you one more question before we started this conversation and now mm -hmm. when you when you look at yourself would you say that you're maybe slightly more open to looking at something that might move you down the scale, or are you just still locked into the same position? Just, just still locked in. How about you, sir? So, I've talked to a lot of different people about a lot of different things. So far, I haven't had anyone. I, I can converse with anyone about pretty much anything. So far, no one's presented or said anything to me that would make me change my position. Um, I couldn't imagine anyone saying anything that would really change my position because really, everything really tends to always come back around to that there is uh, an intelligent design, that there is a purpose, that there is a plan, that there is a creator. And, and you know, for the creator, for the created to, you know, believe in themselves more than, than the creator is just our folly and our short-sightedness. I mean, it's a lot like a father dealing with his child in, in, in the human sense, you know, kids, often tend to believe in themselves and, and believe what they believe is, is, is true but they haven't had the experiences that as a father that i've had and knowing that what you're doing is going to lead down the wrong path hmm. i know this i'm trying to protect you from that you know and that's where a lot of people say well why would god let you know why doesn't god you know because he's trying to protect you because he's trying to grow you he's trying to prepare let, you. let me ask you uh, one thing here Let's say two weeks from now, I see you guys at the grocery store, and I'm so happy to see you. Right. I'm like, Jason, Alexis, I have something. Okay. I'm not saying that I do, but hypothetically, let's say I had something where if we went out to lunch and we spent 15 minutes together, that it would move you down five notches on that belief scale. Would you sit down and listen to it? Would you have lunch with me? I could I have lunch listen. with you, but I wouldn't change my mind. Would you listen? I would listen and keep an open mind. and. You know, um, all, all I can do is, is, is keep an open mind, listen to what you have to say, and then we'll evaluate from there.